Hello everyone, welcome. We have a special interview here with the with Pat Lima, the winner of the 2024 annual retro event. The event was in classic no V format, which is a bit of a contrived made up format that didn't exist previously. Um, anyways, it just ended a couple weeks ago. It consisted of a 10 game qualifying stage, cut to top eight, and match play from the top eight in which case uh, Pat ended up uh, beating Dr. Torch and then Brad Kipple and then Johnny Chu to go on to win the championship which is uh, a gauntlet of retro players if, if I've ever seen one. <laughs> so Pat, here, uh, nice to have you here. Thanks for having me, Eddie. I really appreciate it. Um, very excited to talk about this. Um, this was uh, an event that I was looking forward to for quite some time. Um, but. Uh, I played similar formats in the past. Like, I know me and my friends were playing original trilogy only, which mm. is very similar. It has all the maintenance cards um, mm. that I think Classic Novi doesn't include, but um, very similar. But it's, it was, I love the format, honestly. But yeah, I've never actually tried that format, but I've I've seen you guys play it. Uh, it's so it's, it's Classic Novi just plus maintenance, right? Exactly. I play it with um, so Mandarin and Dark Deal Forty Four and um, COTVG plays it sometimes too. But okay. yeah, love the format. Love Classic Novi as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I enjoyed Classic Novi as well too. I didn't find it too overpowered. I found it kind of like peak power level where everything still was good, but you didn't have the degeneracy of Pod Racing or Senate, anything exactly. like that. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I liked, it. and I found that you know, light side was good, dark side was good. It wasn't uh, one-sided, really. Yeah, I'd like to look at the stats. Um, I know Echo Base Trooper maybe had posted the stats on like which side, but it wasn't overwhelming, I don't think. Um, and there was a variety of deck choices, so that was good. Right, and if I remember correctly, this, he posted stats from like the qualifying stage or before that, and it was kind of as expected a ton of Watcher Step, but in yeah. the top eight, there really wasn't. I didn't play Watcher Step, and you didn't play Watcher Step. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, yeah, I have more to say about that, the reason why I didn't, but, um, okay. yeah. Okay, well, uh, we'll get into that. So, uh, so anyways, how, my first question I want to ask is, how did you get into Star Wars CCG? You know, what's, what's your story? So, I've been playing for quite a while, but, like, like I probably was playing really, really bad Star Wars cards in the very beginning. I, I started when I was probably, like, maybe 10. Um, okay. I had like family, you know, my uncle uh, taught me how to play, just the me basic mechanics. And I didn't really have, this was way before GAMP uh, was a thing, so I remember I'd like be playing with my cards, like in, my, in the basement, like switching sides, like playing against myself, <laughs> and like seeing like who I could like eat with um, the Rancor, like right. kind of thing, like very like not skilled at all, and then you know, I feel like this is a very common thread, but Gemp was like the great, it's the great equalizer. It really improves your skill level. Mm -hmm. And I think I was introduced that to that in like maybe 2018, 2019. Okay. And uh, I just really loved, loved being able to play retro all the time. It's not great if you're trying to get work done. <laughs> um, very addicting. But yes. uh, I don't know, I loved, I loved Star Wars cards. Gemp just, took me to the next level so yeah it's it's awesome to be able to play a game that you know you can't really play otherwise i mean sometimes there's in-person events and i'm actually going to one tomorrow believe it or not but it's uh gimp is awesome and it lets the few of us who still play play yeah definitely good luck, <laughs> good luck uh, thanks tomorrow. thanks it's a premiere of death star 2 by the way yeah that's my bread and butter <laughs> yeah yeah i think a lot of us retro players really like that but i know you've you started playing some open too right yeah, so I was really, really big into open. I think like around um, COVID, and then a couple of years, and then I started to like dabble back into retro. And I'm like, oh my god, I really, you know, it sparked some love that I I forgot about. And mm -hmm. um, so then I started, you know, trying out all these different formats. And I made a lot of friends that they only play retro. And so naturally, you know, I just kind of stuck with it, mm -hmm. and um, I still dabble in open with um, how do we get into this mess? 
but uh, nothing super serious like at the moment. I'm more retro at the time. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, I think uh, I'm definitely one of the retro only players, at least for now. Um, yeah. I just I just like I like the nostalgia of it personally. Definitely. Okay, so let's let's talk about now the the tournament itself. So in the qualifying stage, the uh, you could play whatever deck you wanted. You didn't have to lock in your decks, unlike the top eight. Uh, so what were your thoughts? What were your deck choices? What did you play? You know, how did how did it go? So okay, so for the qualifier, um, I played all sorts of dark decks. I remember playing Brangus, which mm-hmm. I had really good success with. And we talked I about we talked about play. Brangus beforehand. Yeah, <laughs> Brangus, it's great against everything except for watch your step watch your step is really really fast and it's it can be hard and i know some people like dylan were playing grabbers which is a nightmare if they grab control right because then there's draining f3 you know at kessel and it's really really fast and then they can really shut down your activation Mm -hmm. if they flip because most of your activation comes from twixes so i you know i I got in a few games with Brangus, luckily not against Watch Your Step, and um, I tried out Hunt Down, which I really liked. It's really balanced, and um, gosh, I think I got one game of AOBS in, but um, and and actually I played uh, That Thing's Operational once, oh. which is really really good against. Um, it's actually really good against Watch Your Watch Your Step, but not not good against other decks, which <laughs> is part of what um you know what i was trying to figure out what i wanted to play for the top eight but um so i had pretty good success i think i I got only one loss on dark side which is surprising because every because everyone was saying oh dark side's the worst side because you know you have watch your step to to go up against but um when i played light side i got Right in my last two games i actually back to back i lost with watch your step twice Uh oh um I think Watch Your Step can be really good, but you need the right build. And I, I, f- I feel like I didn't get enough um, games in with the right build. And so I just got smashed back to back by Bring Him Before Me, mm. which I think is the bane of Watch Your Step's existence because it can remove Luke from the table, um, especially if you have the free Executor variant. Yeah. Because you can get Executor out immediately, which most you people play. <laughs> Yeah, you have pretty much unlimited Imperial commands because Watch Your Step doesn't um, it doesn't run uh, grabbers. At least most most versions yep. don't run grabbers, and so it can just constantly limit your your battle destinies. Um, and they can really force the drains in on the ground if they get Emperor out and if they get Vader out to scoop up Luke. And so it can be really tough maintaining a ground presence. And so, you know, and I also saw Dr. Torch was playing Bring Him Before Me. Not even, well, I think he was free executor, but, like, it wasn't the the centerpiece of his deck. It was more like ties that he could recycle with Cyanar, yeah. and he could shoot down ships. Yeah. And so um, I think Starship Weapons are another thing that Watcher Step kind of struggles with from time to time. Uh, I felt like I was just getting, you know, shot down, like, every single game. And then I would go up against TTO, and I would get... I would get shot down by by Mianda or or, um, or Talon Rolls. So <laughs> exactly. So I'm, I'm just like, okay, I don't really like Watch Your Step. I think it's a great deck, but right now everyone's teching for it, so I gotta change change directions. And so um, I was fortunate enough. I barely skimped by to the top eight. I you know as You're... you know I I was like last place in the in the top eight for the for the qualifying round. I think you were eighth seed. Um, yeah. Yeah, so so I was definitely going in with a bit of a chip on my shoulder, but um, so I had to talk with a lot of people to figure out, and there were some big things that changed how I chose my decks in the top eight. For one, we knew who our first person was. That was so something that was very third, weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's one third of our our matches. We, we basically know what's going to happen. Right. And then you can also, because I, I think it reseeds, so you can kind of take an edu- educated guess on who you might face for the next round. It's not going to be, it's most likely not going to be one of the lower seeds. I mean, I say that, but then it ended up being that case. But so I kind of just, you know, use that information 
to tailor my deck because I knew that I just wanted to make it to the top two, mm -hmm. the final, um, because then you could be guaranteed like the prize that you know the desired prize. So and I'm like at that at that point it's just you know bragging rights. Um, and the prizes, you know, were the same for the top two. They're both uncut sheets. So, um, yeah, that played played a big role. So, I don't know if you want to like go into the top eight and uh, talk about matchups. Yeah, yeah. Let's, so let's go ahead and I talk a, about that. Yeah, I have a pretty big like history with playing uh, Doctor Torch. I, you know, we played all throughout Death Star Two into Reflections Two. So like. I know his, I have a feeling, I know his style, mm -hmm. I know he likes, um, like, hidden base, and I know he's really good at putting a lock on the game, like, he can get, it, it could be worse going, he can get, like, he can grim toss you at really good times, and then put stuff out of play without a commission, so with, a, and I, and also, like, any time that I've had good luck against him, it's always been with, like, hunt down. And um, like especially against hidden base because they know that hidden base does not like early pressure, right? Um, because they can't. It's like it's twofold. They can't top deck um, because they can lose a system, so it forces them to lose from their hand. And losing from their hand is like it's it's really bad because that's resources that you can actually put onto the board. And so I, I really wanted to do a fast deck. So I was between that. And AOBS, and I mm. and I felt like AOBS was it could do like the same amount of damage. It was like two points of damage over one turn versus uh, one point of damage like you know every turn, and so it's like the same technically. But I felt like the hunt downs like it's just every single turn that kind of pressure was something that I really liked because it could make it so that a bad matchup could become a good matchup if they lost like an important card early on so right. that's kind of what I wanted to do and I don't know if you noticed this because I, I think I remember watching your stream and um, you and you pointed out that I have a bunch of out of commission cancelers. Yeah, because <laughs> I had a feeling that he was going to like super heavy stack his deck to put like a ton of out of commissions, either to cancel Visage or just straight up put like Vader out of play. And I felt like it could also be good later on in the top eight if I ended up facing Watcher Step because I know Watcher Step really likes to um, run a bunch of. Uh, transmission terminated so I felt like okay it, it has some utility in those matchups so I guess I, I, it's not bad to have three out of commission cancelers and I wanted it I wanted something more than just the uh, unsalvageable mm -hmm. because I didn't want watcher step to be able to play the the out of commission and then be able to play it you know right after from from loss so I wanted right. two different types of out of commission um, cancelers so that was part of my deck decision and um, what else so um, let me think about other selections yeah and, um, and, and just really quickly just so the the viewers yeah. are aware so the decks that you did end up going with were a throne remains with the super home one and uh, order to engage shenanigans gimmer yep. stick you know uh, caldred or whatever his name is and afa so inserts which I yep. think is a pretty filthy deck. I think it's a <laughs> really good deck. And then your dark side, I would describe it as like a hunt down ground power, you know, with, with space. But you know, and and so you know, fast pressure, like you said. Um, and, and then your first match was against Doctor Torch, who played Bring Him Before Me uh, with Tie Fighters, with specifically Tie Interceptors. And I want to talk about that because it goes back to what you said that everyone was countering or trying to tech against uh, watch your step and one of the big ones that people were doing was ties you know because you could do tie weapons or matching pilots things like that and so uh, I had a similar approach too and I think it was a good idea to not play watch your step because it blanks yeah. a lot of the cards that everyone ends up playing exactly. and uh, oh yeah and then Torch played hidden base uh, just like a hidden base build for his yeah. light side and so uh, in that first game which is on YouTube for everyone who wants to watch it it was. It seemed like it was getting in a chess type of match. You know, he was. You were set up doing damage, and he was getting ready. But then the big thing is that it's worse for yes. nineteen or something. <laughs> you want to talk about yeah. that? Yeah. So honestly, I, like in retrospect, I was like, 
trying to figure out if I should use the full amount or I I tend to like if he was running it's a hit then that would be an entire turn gone so I tend to like say use all but like maybe one or two mm -hmm. but I think I like like ran it through in my head I'm like okay I could lose the rest from hand even if I don't move executor because I could like set up those three drains and even if even if he has it's a hit you know I still I'm still pretty set up so I just used I used all of it maybe I could have used all but one and moved executor over but I honestly I'm like this could be the game right here and I'd rather just you know I'm in a good position even if it doesn't if, even if it doesn't work out so it's um it's worse was definitely a card that I added in on top of the three out of commission cancelers uh, specifically for um, for Dr. Torch but it also has that added benefit of shuffling and that comes mm -hmm. up in, in my matchup versus Brad um, where I you know I knew that he was going to be trying to constantly retrieve with on the edge so I, I had a feeling that it would have utility in stopping that because once again, Hunt down doesn't run uh, grabbers, right. and that, so, that's what like, killed me in my game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, like, like I never, I don't know if you ever like look at my play style. Mm -hmm. I love grabbers. It's like my like my number one thing because you can stop so many different shenanigans with just grabbers, and so um, I typically try to run at least two in my decks, but. If I don't run any, I'm running like a high pressure deck that doesn't let them set up those like lock lockout situations, mm -hmm. and so um, or I have cancelers for stuff that I would otherwise grab. So in this case, I I, I you know brought cancelers for out of commission. I brought cancelers for it could be worse, and so it just so happened to work out with with Doctor Torch. It was a pretty honestly pretty tight game he was making me lose to my to visage he had luke out and um and so it was pretty even i honestly i was surprised that he used it i felt like and i feel like i try to when i whenever i have it could be worse in my decks i try to wait until the very end game so i can kind of loop it um and yeah. it, it makes it so much so much more like like potent if you can wait to the end game because by that point maybe they have lost the um the canceller um towards the end so or even they've lost their grabber towards right. the end so right. i was i you know i was pretty happy and I, I wanted to take the take the chance and it ended up making a huge difference so it allowed me to play a completely different play style in my in my second game mm -hmm. uh which was um I think it was T it was TRM versus uh, Bring Him Before Me, and that was an inch. That was a game I actually prepped the most for. I didn't even prep at all for the previous game because I knew that it would just be a very formulaic setup. I get Vader on table, get Executor space when he flips, and that's like that's it. And try to prioritize getting the out of commission cancelers in hand. That was it. But for the other game, it's very difficult because like that TRM, it's like it's all timing. Right, because you have to put yourself in a position where you can't be battled, um, and I, you know, I watched some of the videos, and I, you know, I agree with the commentary, but like there are times where I have AFA in their deck, anger, fear, aggression, for those people <laughs> um, that don't know that acronym, but um, so I'd put AFA in their deck, and I wouldn't want to put a person that's you know can be battled in a position where they can be battled because I want them to lose that four force. And so I'd be pretty methodical about trying to deploy people selectively. And so going to that matchup, I had a feeling he would take Bring Him Before Me just because it's so good against the field. Mm -hmm. I actually like hadn't seen him lose at all with it. He didn't lose so with I'm that like, deck. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I don't think I've seen him lose with that Bring Him Before Me deck. Right. So I'm like, I gotta, I'm, 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 and so this is where a lot of card choices come into play. So I had no idea when you're trying to like prep for an opponent you'll like kind of make a deck that you think they may that, you know that's similar to theirs so you can have you know play, play testing practice but that's such a hard deck to recreate because you don't know how many ties they run mm -hmm. you don't know any of that stuff so it's all just kind of guessing and so I'm like does he run three ties does he run <laughs> six ties I don't know and so I'm like I'm just gonna run 
two Grimtoshes because I feel like I'm gonna end up playing AOBS or something and I wanna minimize their hand size. Yeah. And so I'm like, you can't go wrong with Grimtosh. Uh, so I put two in there and I ended up playing a pretty big role in, um, I think I took out two ties and he doesn't have many ties in that deck. I looked at the deck list after and so I was pretty lucky in that respect. But um, so going into that game, I had the game plan was get Luke out and start draining immediately because I hadn't seen a lot of Vader's in his deck. Um, so I'm like, if I'm going to do it, I might as well just get Luke out. And he runs, I think, the Emperor's Power version, which yep. I, I think you might have said this that um, that Luke Skywalker Rebel Scout isn't that great against. Right, right. But I, yeah, yeah, but I felt like he runs um, always thinking with your stomach, uh -huh. and I know that, that Luke is much better against that. I mean, you can still cancel the drain, but Luke what doesn't go missing. Um, but And that would be a game changer, because if he puts Luke, if he makes Luke missing, then he can just keep applying pressure on the site, and, it's, and I won't be able to... Um, you know, I, was, I would lose to your destiny, so a lot of those things come into play. But I wanted to keep constant pressure on him and just have Luke out, so that if he comes down with Vader, he just ends up scooping Luke, and he can't battle. And mm -hmm. so that deck, that TRM deck, it's all based around me making you have to battle me, but me not giving you a character to battle. <laughs> so, you know, anger, fear, aggression. Um, Caldera was a huge thing that's like new to the format you know so people and it works there's a lot of interplay that I didn't realize the deck had until like I started actually playing with it so Beggar is in the deck yep. and I remember you showed me a TRM and you gave me like, like oh my god I'm like oh this is a good idea and so Beggar's in the deck so it kind of forces them to over deploy mm -hmm. um, because they don't want to get beat down and then Caldera comes down, and then they can't, you know, so they're forced to battle and then order to engage triggers. Yeah. So the deck had a lot of interplay. And honestly, none of it was my idea. It was all like collaboration from other people. <laughs> um, the deck is almost effectively um, COTVG's um, Reflections 2 deck. Okay. Although he runs a bunch of revolutions, so it's different. But uh, I, knew, I knew that I. I um, I just had to get a few AFAs off, anger, fear, aggressions, had to trigger order to engage any way I could, and I would be pretty solid. And, and you know, even if I could whittle them down enough, I could maybe, you know, take it in the second game, which would be a hunt down. So that was big, and I almost didn't even want to go to space, like, at all, against Dr. Torch uh, with Home One, because I knew that he, he wanted to battle because that would enable him to recycle his ties, mm -hmm. redeploy them, and also I didn't want to give him a place to battle. I wanted everything to, to trigger. And so um, that's how the game went. I ended up getting super lucky when it came to playing Rebel Barrier. He didn't have the canceller for Rebel Barrier, so Order to Engage went off. And then Anger, Fear, Aggression went off that same turn. And so, and then I was able to Grim Tosh him to get rid of his other ties so he couldn't cancel my drains. And so a lot of things really went my way that game. And I think Torch was in a, in a position where he had to play kind of aggressive because right. he was on the clock. Yep. And so it, it allowed me to like really take advantage of that. So that's kind of how that game went. Um, got super lucky, but it was a, it was a great chess match, I, I felt. Yeah. yeah, it was definitely a good, a great game to watch, and, and yeah, that you know, getting on a twenty-two force deficit or you, uh, yeah. whatnot really puts someone on the back foot, and you because you you're forced to change the way you play. You can't play, you can't like turtle, get it all set up, and lock the game down. Yeah. You really have to stop them from doing damage, and that's what you did. Just put early pressure, which is exactly. what you don't want to see exactly. in that situation. So, and then going on to game two, you played uh, Brad Kipple, who was the guy who beat me. Um, so mm -hmm. Brad was playing uh, hunt down kind of power, but also with like ties. Uh, you know, of course, probably to counter watch your step. And yep. his light side was watch your step with like uh, palace raiders and things like that. So talk to me about that game. So that was a brutal game. I put in a ton of reps for that, and I don't think I won at all. Like if I did win, it, it like was maybe by max five 
It was always a closed game. Um, and when I, you know, when it wasn't, cl- I it just got blown out. Um, and I think Watch Your Step wins most of those matchups unless you tech like Brad did. Mm-hmm. Brad was pretty deliberate about some of his choices, like putting um, Tatooine Celebration Canceller and um, putting in like um, like ATATs and and um, and those ties, like you said. Right. He was pretty good about teching, which I I should have done in retrospect. I should have put a lot more more cards that were you know watch your step hate, but I didn't because I wanted a pretty well you know a pretty well rounded deck that'd be good against other stuff in the field like hidden base, and so um, he picked for the first game he picked um, was it watch your step was the first one it was and watch your step was, yeah yeah so um, going in my game plan was number one. Hopefully, I would get Rend- Rendili in hand because I needed activation, mm-hmm. either Rendili or Executor in hand because I needed activation badly and I also needed to occupy um, a battleground system. So I got really lucky and I open handed that, but I didn't get a single character. I think I may have gotten like Janus or, but that was it. So, like, it was just as bad as not getting one of the system, like the system right. in hand. <laughs> So I had no activation. Like I remember, I was like, he must have had a really bad hand because he did nothing the first two turns. And so my game plan going into that was just occupy, like Tatooine uh, docking bay with Emperor, and then get Vader to the Cantina. Um, so I wanted to cut off most of his Tatooine locations because I knew that I would lose the game by a lot mm-hmm. if he could get Celebration up and running. Right. And Emperor is definitely better at the Tatooine docking bay because he has immunity um, than Vader does. Especially if you have Choke Vader in the Cantina, it's so good because you don't have the Palace Raiders to worry about. Right. And so that was game plan. Did not go that way at all. <laughs> I don't even think I got Emperor in hand until like very late, and he ended up going on on the Executor. Um, so well, yeah, I ended you, up. Uh, I have you now, didn't you, with them? <laughs> yeah, I did. And I'll tell you, I'll go into that. Like, there was a specific reason why I played it. It looked dumb at the time, and it, it probably was dumb, but, like, there was a reason why I did that. Um, but so I kept falling. He got Luke out immediately, which was really depressing, but at least we were both taking damage from, from Visage. Mm-hmm. Um, but my goal was to follow Luke around anywhere he went because I have more Vaders than he has Luke. And I can just kill Luke with I have you now and just redeploy Vader. And so that was my goal, that like like on the spot kind of like um, strategy was to just follow Luke around. I wouldn't take any damage to his drain and then I would consequently be draining because he would have to move Luke. So I think that was my game plan on the fly. Um, I knew I wanted to get Vader out immediately. That was my other game plan. And so after that, I think my second or third turn I'm like I'm going to save a million force because I'm going to come down with Executor I'm going to come down with Grand Admiral Thrawn all in one turn and try to go for a battle to, so I can because I knew that I had to start clearing characters because if, if they get set up yeah. they have so much forfeit that like it'd be it'd be very difficult for me to stop them even if they're not drawing like a lot of battle destiny they have um, destinies to power with um, Theron Net. they have they can subtract power from me through um, Outrider. And mm-hmm. so I could even get whittled away through just the power differential. So I knew I had to get him out quickly and start eating through some characters. And so that was my game plan. And it actually went according to plan, except when I started drawing really bad destinies and I couldn't even crack the immunity to attrition for <laughs> some of his ships. And so I think I kind of had to switch game plans. I had to load up the executor with a bunch of um, like a bunch of people, whether it was Janice or when I got Gurry out, I was so happy. Like that was like the game changer because capping his destiny at one was oh, yeah. huge. Yeah. And so um, I think one thing that Garrett ended up saying that I totally agree with is I should have gotten like Janice to the ground and started draining because damage is is key and having that extra forfeit ended up not being, you know, important um, in space. Um, But there was a big battle where I had like five, four, one was my destiny. Uh And he shuffled it. And so I forgot that I'm like, was there a one in there? Was it five, four, something else? 
And so I verified it, like, and I'm like, oh my god, it's five four one. So what if I draw the four and the one, and I don't even crack their immunity? <laughs> and so I had to play. I have you now to add a destiny so that it can ensure that I was going to get the like, you know, the full amount. Yeah. And take out like take out two characters, or I think it was one. That's just how broken Watch Your Step is. It might have been just like just like wedge. wedge or <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So um, it ended up. I don't even know if it made a huge difference, but. Um, Luckily, I'm like, this. These are the things that need to go, need to happen for me to actually make this game, like you know, at least surmountable. I need him to lose, um, tattooing celebration off the top. I need him to top deck that. I can't have him like, like getting that going, and I need him to lose uh, on the edge because I've only counted, I've only ever counted one on the edge in his deck. So I wanted him to lose it. So that he'd be forced to kind of play it from loss, so there would right. only be like a one-off situation, and that's what ended up happening. And I was saving the the shuffle, the deck shuffle, so that he couldn't get a six going. Yeah. But he ended up getting a five anyway, just like just the way the deck kind of auto shuffled. Oh, so no. <laughs> uh, it didn't make too much of a difference. But yeah, so that was I. And um, I remember sticks. Um, is that or C sticks? C sticks. Yeah. Um, uh, he was huge when it came to play testing, and he's like, if he gets below like fifteen, drop. Like you can't like mm. let him get in a position because I wasn't one hundred percent sure if he had more than one on the edge, and I did not want him to get like more than like fifteen force because I I did not think that I could I could uh, overcome that, and right. so the second I was in a position where I could. I think it was like 13, 12, or 13 that I had to, that I got my deck down to. I just drew, or got his deck down to, I just drew up the second I had the chance. And so I'm like, okay, I may be able to win the next game if he starts, uh, if he doesn't start no escape. Because I noticed that in all of his games, he never started no escape. So That's I'm like, I, I might noticed, be able to yeah. get honor out. <laughs> and so that came into play pretty big. Um,. So going to the second game, I knew I had to play conservatively, but also because eleven or twelve is is not a huge thing to overcome. I think that's still anyone's game at that point. Yeah. And yeah. I knew that I needed to get honor out. I needed to get anger, fear, aggression going, and then ultimately get beggar, Caldera, that whole engine rolling, so that I could start that on um, order to engage damage. Um. I, I think it was like turn two or three, I Grimtoshed him, hoping I'd get a few Emperors, and I just saw his hand was just loaded with like <laughs> characters. Um, like he had an at, -AT he had um, Igar, he had like um, Zuckus and Forlom, like his hand was absolutely stacked. And so I'm like, I remember a a Anger, Fear, Aggression was in his deck, and I'm like, I can't deploy Luke. Luke's going to get blown out off the table. And worst case scenario, even if I do barrier him, Luke's going to be, like, somehow landlocked. Like, yeah. he won't be able to go to a safe spot. And so I was very nervous about deploying Luke because I didn't want the AFA, Anger, Fear, Aggression to pop and, and you know, not have it do anything. Because mm -hmm. I think I felt that that was the key to the game. And so... Um, when I had the opportunity, because that deck is also a ton of verifying what's in your reserve to figure out what's in your force pile. Right, right. And so, you know, a lot of times you'll you'll see me like not drop anything from my force pile, and just because I know that all of that's useless, mm -hmm. and I just want like specific cards. So that game, I wanted anger, fear, aggression. I wanted order to engage. I wanted a rebel barrier, and I wanted to be able to set up the home one package. And so. I was lucky enough to get a few tunnel visions in hand and set up that, that home one package and and start that drain of four. I think it was a drain of four, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. And so and the beautiful yeah, thing about yeah. course one I'll I'll give credit where credit's due. That was how did we get into this mess's idea? He said that everyone's doing free executor. Right. And free executor can make it to castle, but it can't make it to Coruscant. Mm. Um, so you wait for them to deploy, and then you throw down Coruscant, and you can get that drain going with impunity. Um, That's a good so idea. That's that smart. Was, yeah. 
and and it also it has like this added benefit of being like a, a gunite where you make all of their imperials like deploy plus two and so that was huge and so I'm like, oh my god, that's genius! And also in AOBS, you can like convert their system or something like right. that and drop and down on the even... on the Corsa. <laughs> yeah. And so um, that was it. Was just such a cool idea. That's a good I idea. I mean, yeah, it, it has a negative reputation because it they can deploy super cheap there. But if you set up the home one package on Coruscant, I don't think they're gonna want to try to mess with it unless they have like a ton of stuff, which not a lot of decks just have a ton of stuff ready to go against the super home one and so that game ended up going like i don't think i could have asked for a better game i think i do agree with the commentary that like maybe like i should have gotten luke out maybe a turn or two before so that he was losing to visage damage instead of no one losing to visage damage mm -hmm. once again i was still kind of nervous about the anger fear aggression popping and um him having someone to battle um, you know, I, I, so I, 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 sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh no, I wasn't going to say anything. Oh, I was just going to say uh, one thing you, you mentioned is a really good skill. I think that uh, you know advanced players have is that looking in your reserve deck and to know by process of elimination what's in your force pile, but then not drawing if you don't need to, because otherwise you know you draw junk, you have thirty yeah. cards in your hand, and now no force to do anything, and all your cards you want are in your deck. Exactly. And also, like, just having a ton of force in your force pile, like, is kind of a threat for the opponent because now, like, you can really go after them. So it forces them to overcommit, which I like. Right. Um, and so, yeah, like, really just being able to narrow down what you need. And also going into all my games, I'm like, these are the cards that I need to get in order to win this game. Yes, yes. And that's actually how the third game is... It, textbook like me trying to figure out exactly what cards I need to piece together in order to beat um, AOBS so I can talk about that game if yeah you yeah let's uh, just as a quick preview I guess so the finals then so you you, uh, you you had a really good chess game against Brad and you ended up winning with the help of order to engage and some clever moving of your guys so that he actually couldn't battle you everywhere that was really cool uh, the last yeah, couple yeah. turns that, that was actually like I'm like oh my god how? Because if I messed that up, if I like didn't do exactly that, he could have outdrained me mm -hmm. that final turn because it was like only a one or two card difference before I started losing below the differential. Right. So I'm like, wait a second. If I'm at three locations, he can't <laughs> battle me at all of them. Order to engage will trigger, and I I won't take any uh, force loss to any of his drains. So right. then I just I just moved everyone, and then it was like, I don't know. Like I was super happy once I figured that out, but. If I hadn't, then I might have lost. That's how close that game was. I yeah. think so, because I, I remember looking at that, and I'm like, wait a second, he can win if he, you know. And then you started moving the guys, and I was like, okay, he's doing it. I know he's doing it. <laughs> yeah, because that was the pivotal turn, because I think that essentially decided the match in that in that sense. Um, exactly. That was a very key key moment. So you ended up beating Brad Kippel by over 11, so you, you won the match. And the finals were, of course, against Johnny Chu, which everyone knows who Johnny Chu is. Um, and he was playing, let's see, first game you played against his AOBS, and of course he's yep. amazing at tracking, very good player, very nasty agent stack. Um, so talk about that one. So agents is probably the deck that I played the most, but haven't played the most against. Um, so I play with Dark DL44 like all the time. You probably will sometimes see us just mm -hmm. like playing the same matchup and you're like, oh my God, how are, <laughs> how are these guys not going crazy? Um, but we constantly play Profit versus Agents. And um, it's, we joke about this, that um, Dark DL44 had like a dream and um, that like he somehow came up with this idea <laughs> that um, Geimer Stick is super, super good against um, against AOBS because their their character pool is so limited. Um, they only have Jazz, I think is the, or yeah. however you pronounce the name. Yeah. Um, that's it. And so um, that deck is definitely like a traditional true surgeon is, is very difficult to beat um, with the deck that I was playing for a couple of reasons. It runs uh, Sense and Alter. Mm -hmm. So it can alter the Geimer stick. It can alter order to engage. I had I had the sense 
alter shield, or sorry, not shield, um, effect, but I didn't want to start it. My whole deck is about forcing them to have to activate, so I had to start battle plan. I had to start that. So I didn't have the room in my three starting effects to start the sack shield. So, you know, I, I was definitely vulnerable to um, sense and alter. So the, a true surgeon, like if you look at the default deck lists, it runs sense alter, it runs jazz, which can get around uh, right. Geimer stick, you know, right. and it also runs two projective telepathies. Yep. Those cards cancel um, anger, fear, aggression. So I got pretty lucky that um, Johnny was running a variant that didn't have all the things that I didn't want. Because he had all I the cheese. He, he had all, yeah, the, all, the, <laughs> all the Yeah, exactly. So the cheese was, was basically free, like, you know, free to wreak havoc. And so um, I think he only ran one projective that he ended up losing off the top, like, mid mm. to late game. Um, so I was lucky that he didn't get that. Um, also, he didn't run any sense and alter. Right. I can thank Watcher Step for that because sense and alter are kind of useless cards against mm -hmm. Watcher Step because the flip side obviously makes that all their stuff immune to that. And so, um, order to engage and Geimer Stick were able to you know stay on the table. And so, those are the two cards that I really wanted to get out as soon as possible. And also, Luke. So I was constantly scanning my deck for those cards. And it's funny because I knew that the home one package wouldn't be that important. And if, if it was going to be important, it was going to be important very late game. And um, I actually had Coruscant at home one. I had Akbar, I think, in my hand. I even had um, a Hashin in my hand as well. And so he was set up at the Coruscant system without presence of the force. So I could have attacked him. But um, I know, like, uh, Johnny's, like, very methodical, and he had exactly enough ability to get around, uh, what's that, oh, what's the, the, the Nesby? Yeah, the Nesby. Or, yeah, he, he had exactly enough ability. He specifically didn't deploy Gurry um, onto the Stinger so that he had that one ability from the Stinger yep. to add to his total. Mm hmm um, very, very methodical. I think he like, and he even st stated in the beginning of the game, like, I, you know, I wish um, Geimer Stick could be overloaded. So he knew that was a key card that would ultimately decide the game. Yeah, it would keep Luke on table. It would give me a place to drain, and it would allow me to do all that stuff and also trigger anger, fear, aggression, um, without worrying about him having to battle me. And so Geimer Stick was huge. It's funny because in playtesting, I was I was practi practicing a lot against the traditional, like um, the traditional surgeon, um, the default AOBS, and like when I was playing, I was even playing myself from time to time, and I would start Emperor with Presence of the Force to the throne room, and it would just be an absolute nightmare uh -huh. um, because you'd start draining for three at my throne room. I think the only way I could mitigate the damage is if I like got my Yavin 4 Twix out with Re Leia Rebel Princess, but that was only like a Band-Aid solution. <laughs> and, and so um, I also got lucky because I think Johnny only runs one Presence of the Force, so mm. he kind of didn't use it for that purpose. And so, um, you know, I, I got lucky like pretty much that entire um, matchup for for my um, for TRM versus AOBS in terms of like just the cards that they ended up going my way, and so um, was that the first game or was that the second game? That was the that was the first, that was the first game. Yeah, it, it was pretty decisive. I think uh, if I remember correctly, uh, because basically the the key, you know, I I played agents uh, as my dark deck and. When you can't track and you're not flipped, it's it kind of sucks. <laughs> it's not that yeah, good. You accumulate so many emperors in your hand. Yeah. you can't do anything with them. You yeah. know. So and, and you don't <laughs> you don't know what's in your deck unless you've active or you've uh, drawn it for destiny, and so and th that's where AFA comes in too because it's shuffled. So the few turns yes. that he that he got from seeing his force pile, his use pile, and, and top of his deck got shuffled away. And so maybe exactly. maybe in his force pile he knew were like three cards or something, but. That combination pretty much neutered the tracking, so you don't know what to draw, you don't know what to do anything, so uh, very effective against agents. 
Gimmer stick exactly. and agents. Or AFA. Exactly. Um, another thing I was super scared of was overload. Mm-hmm. Um, I had Luke's lightsaber in hand since like turn one, but um, if he just overloaded Luke and took out the Gimmer stick as well, yeah. like just by killing the whole character, right. that would effectively end the end the game for me. Um, and so I was very careful about not deploying his lightsaber until I verified like that his deck was shuffled. Every single card in his deck was somehow like shuffled. Yeah. Um, or I saw overload in his reserve. And so um, Johnny would probably still find a way to, to get the overload <laughs> while also tracking the zero and still overloading the right. so because um, he's just that kind of player. Um, and so uh, he played super like I don't think he could have possibly done anything differently. He played like perfectly, um, and I think just the way that the decks matched up, I was just super fortunate. And so going into game two, I had a pretty big buffer, and I knew that I just had to play a good, clean, safe um, Star Wars card. So like I had to, you know, get get an Imperial to that um, site so I could get Luke off the table. I can then get um, Luke into Vader's hands, and then I could just start doom stacking one site because yep. I knew his deck was very big into beating down the opponent. And right. so the speeders go. Um, exactly. Um, I knew that he. I think someone. I think Garrett said this, but um, I knew that he had uncontrollable fury, which I, which I was nervous about. Mm. And so there was a time where I was like literally just digging for Lord Vader instead of the choke Vader because I didn't want him to slap that on Vader. Even if he didn't have like an ability greater than three character on the table, he stood. He could have just put him down. And so that's such a big um, card, such a big counter to Vader. Not non Lord Vader, yeah. <laughs> exactly. It was actually in my deck too. It was in my TRM. That's right. Yeah, and, that's right. Because I. Like I'm like okay, everyone's gonna be playing bringing before me. So and everyone's playing choke Vader because it's so good against watch your steps. So right. I'm gonna put uncontrollable fury down, take Vader out of play with um, with Luke Skywalker Rebel Scout, and then have him still lose um, two force to uncontrollable fury. So it's just a, like a no brainer combo. Um, and so um, as I. So in the second matchup, I was very nervous about Uncontrollable Fury. It's a it's a game changer. It is, it really and I is. knew that he didn't have a ton of characters. It was mostly speeder beef, um, and it was like Leia, Rebel Princess, and maybe Corrin. And so um, I think I just kind of played conservative. I tried to like just get in any drains I could. I knew that he had landing claw, so I was <laughs> I did not want to deploy any Star Destroyer to right. space. I just stuck with Zuckus. I knew that I'm like, okay, I can't, I, you know, that's the only drain I'm probably going to be able to get out of him because he's just going to keep consolidating his speeders in front. And then um, I knew that he was going to eventually cancel Visage. So I wanted to make sure that when I got the second Visage, I only ran two, that when I got the second Visage out, I wanted to have both out of commission cancelers in hand, mm. and I wanted uh, Shuzer at that hollow theater. I wanted to like the trifecta because I wanted to make sure that I was going to be able to keep that on table. And also, I remember them saying that um, I hadn't deployed no escape, but I was honestly just holding on to it in case I wanted to get Visage back if it was somehow top decked or it, it was cancelled. So I just, you know, I just wanted to play, you know, conservative as much as I could given the buffer that I had from the first game. Right, you yeah, know, and, and that's fair. I think uh, the retrieval part of No Escape is huge. It's, very, it's a big deal because it's, I want to retrieve that one card very specifically. Uh, exactly. Yeah. It yeah. also, it allows you to top deck. I was just going to say. <laughs> your turns, like, keep your hand, like, keep your hand set. These are, like, a lot of, like, nuanced things when you play a ton of Star Wars cards um, you pick up on. But it allows you to keep your hand size solid and allows you to top deck um, knowing that you can retrieve that card. Um, So basically it's adding cards to your hand by allowing you to look at whatever your lost pile is. So I think, uh, yeah, No Escape is a a great card. Yeah, I I mean, it's just like Brangus, right? Like, oh, I got to lose two cards. I'm going to lose one for my hand. 
and then one off the top because maybe it's good and I can bring us it back. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Brain is just so broken. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's yeah, <laughs> it is. We could talk about that another day. <laughs> I know exactly, exactly. <laughs> All right, man. Well, well, and, and you ended up, you know, a uh, pretty awesome victory against Johnny Two, and you became the twenty twenty four. Uh, retro event champion so congratulations it was really awesome thank to watch you, um, thank you so much yeah that was awesome and so uh, talking on retro stuff right now the retro league is going on we're currently in event 3 week 3 which is premiered at Endor with uh, the ECC EJP packs are, are you in? Are you doing the retro uh, league this year so I actually started up I started up med school um like two weeks ago, so oh, nice. I haven't been been able to play Star Wars cards as much as I would have liked. So I actually ended up didn't I just didn't sign up for the league because I okay. knew that was going to be a recipe for me getting absolutely nothing done. <laughs> and so I wish I could. Uh, Premiere through Endor looks super fun. Um, I, I remember playing it. I think I played it last year. Um, but TRM super popular. Hunt down super popular. I remember. I think this. Premier through Endor, like Profit is maybe even viable. I, I, my first match I played against Profit. Um, so okay. yeah, there's de it's definitely there are Profits around. But TRM, yeah, TRM is good. Absolutely. So yeah, I mean, and then what is it? Uh, Premier through Death Star 2 yep. after this? Yep, then it's Premier yeah. Death Star 2 and then Premier Reflections 2, but with Agents and Watch Your Step Band. Which uh, so good. has been pretty a pretty popular format because it broadens it's it's a lot similar to uh it's kind of like death star 2 but you know it's the hunt down's better rops doesn't really exist and uh yep. but it's fun so uh for those of the for those of you watching uh you can still join up for the last two events for death star 2 reflections 2 i'm playing in those really the fun and so yeah yeah pat thanks again uh it was a pleasure talking yeah, with you thank you for having me yeah all right and we'll see everyone next time